I'm a 40 year old dermatologist and this filter is an accurate depiction of aging. You notice as time goes on that the folds underneath the eyes become deeper, the nasolabial folds become deeper, there's discoloration of the skin and more hyperpigmentation in areas, and you see new, more fine lines around the eyes as well as on the forehead. Due to gravity, there's more sagging of the skin. What causes the skin to age? Just like a car aging, there are both internal factors and extrinsic factors. There are factors that are extrinsic, like sunlight and pollution, and those cause the paint of a car to chip and fade and become discolored, just like our skin does. You may have seen this photo here, where you can see how much the sun pollution exposure to external elements affects the signs of skin aging. But even if you were a vampire and you never left your house, you would still age. Just like in a car, the brakes don't work so well as you use them and things just break down, so does the everyday use of our muscles and smiling cause things to sag and change and become wrinkly. We have cells in our skin called fibroblasts and they're responsible for making new collagen, making elastin, and that gives the substance to your skin and it also allows it to be elastic, meaning it snaps back after you pull it. Those cells get a little tired as you get older. A lot of the cells get tired as you get older. We all do. And they don't really want to do their job so much anymore. So as those proteins break down, they don't get turned over the same way that they would if you were younger. Also the keratinocytes, the skin cells in your skin are not exfoliating as much. The immune cells aren't really doing their job as well. So they're not clearing out hyperpigmentation as much and they're not clearing out old debris. So things just get a little junky and your skin starts to look saggy and there's brown spots that begin to accumulate and those are essentially the signs of aging. Additionally, the structure, the skeleton that holds up our skin into place actually begins to atrophy and degrade as well. So the bony structure that gives the face the appearance of a face begins to wear down just like the brake pads of a car and there are certain ligaments that separate the fat you know right here you can really see that ligament here and that keeps the fat up underneath the eye and separates it from the fat of the cheek and that just starts to get saggy with time again it's not being repaired and it just becomes saggy and the fat no longer holds its position and starts to kind of go down in fact you can actually even get the fat that kind of starts to pooch out over that ligament because it's not being held into place and gravity eventually starts to affect everything. But did you know that even the two exact same people who got the same exposures and were the same age may not age the same way and that is because of genetics. So just like two different car brands may stand the test of time in different ways, two different people may age entirely different. So if your parents look pretty good for their age, chances are you are too. And if they're not looking so great for their age, then you may wanna stay tuned for this entire video to get tips on anti-aging that will help in the future. So now that you know what causes aging, are there things that you can do to prevent it and reverse it. Yes, this is the first of a four video series on anti-aging. In the next video here, I'm gonna go over anti-aging skincare that can slow down the aging process. The third video is going to be diet, lifestyle changes, and supplements that are anti-aging. And the last video is at home and in office procedures that reverse aging. So this video is for you if you are looking for an anti-aging routine, but you want it to be clean. Like a lot of my friends out there, you might not actually use that much for your skincare routine right now. You may just use some coconut oil or some olive oil. Maybe you wear a sunscreen, but maybe you don't. You're really looking to avoid any skincare that has harmful products in it, but you're starting to notice your first wrinkles and discoloration and signs of aging, and they're starting to bother you. What can you do about it? So everything I've included here is a clean option. And what do I mean by that? I mean that it doesn't contain parabens, phthalates, other hormone mimickers, fragrance, or any potential human carcinogens. 
So let's get to it. So in my first video on anti-aging, I go over the causes of aging. And today I'm gonna to go over the foundations of a clean anti-aging routine, both a morning routine, which is preventative, and evening routine, which fixes the damage that's already been done, the aging that's already occurred. If you already have the basics down, great, stick to the end, where I'll discuss some little extras you can do to really make your skin pop and look more youthful. So first, look at this photo. This is a photo of someone who has had a whole life of sun exposure, pollution exposure, all of the damage that's coming from the outside, all that UV damage and pollutants really cause a lot of the signs of aging that you see. You can see they wore pants their whole life, how much that skin is protected. So even though we can't see the UV radiation coming in, we can't see the pollution causing damage to our skin. It's really like x-rays where you need like a lead cover to protect yourself. That is how you have to think about protecting yourself from the sun and from pollution out in the world. Okay, I know that sounds extreme, but all these invisible particles really are causing a lot of damage in our skin. So what do you need to do? Every dermatologist does these three things to protect themselves from the sun. So the first thing that every dermatologist does is they just try to avoid being outside in the sun between the main times of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. during the spring and summer when the UV index is very high. If you're out, try to find shade. So under an umbrella, under a tent, even under a tree. If you are going to be out, the second best thing you can do is actually just wear protective clothing. So large wide brimmed hat, long sleeves, UV protective clothing is even better than regular cloth, but any sort of protection is great. A physical barrier between you and what's coming in from the outside. The third thing you can do is sunscreen. So sunscreen is great for anything you cannot cover, either by being out of the sun or with clothing. So I know that sunscreen has become this very controversial topic, especially online. It really doesn't have to be, but mineral sunblocks like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide are 100% safe when applied topically on your skin. Don't inhale them. Don't like spray your sunscreen in your mouth. You know, like just don't do that. Speaking of sprays, some but not all spray aerosolized sunscreens have been shown to be contaminated with benzene, meaning they don't put benzene, this human carcinogen in, it's not gonna be listed on the ingredients. It's a byproduct of the propellant that's actually used to spray. And that's the case for anything you spray that has the potential. So like hairspray and dry shampoo and you know Axe body spray, all of those also have that issue with the aerosolized contamination. So if you wanna be really safe, just don't use it. If you are going to use spray sunscreens, use them outside in a well-ventilated area and not inside in a small contained area. And again, don't spray it right in your nose and your mouth. Seems obvious, but I actually had a friend who did that, who had never seen spray sunscreen and sprayed it all in her face and her eyes and her eyes were like red and draining and it was quite a scene. So don't do that. For cream sunscreens, my favorites are Super Goop Mineral Matte Sunscreen. I think that is worth the hype, but it can go on white, especially for darker tones. That can be minimized a little by using a tinted mineral sunscreen. My favorite clean option is Earth Mama Tinted Mineral Sunscreen. My best safe, clean spray sunscreen for running after kids at the beach, this is my go-to, is the Kiss My Face Mineral Sunscreen Spray. That does go on a little white, but then you really know if you got it on. Cause God knows it is difficult getting sunscreen on two, three year old and six year olds. Okay, sun protection done. What else can you do to protect yourself out in the world? We're discussing a product I am almost positive you have heard about and been told you need to use, but you have no idea why. And that is vitamin C serum. So what's the deal with vitamin C serum? Vitamin C is an antioxidant, meaning it fights free radicals. Essentially, you can think of free radicals as little bullets that are created from the UV radiation, from pollution coming in. They're little bullets that are literally damaging your DNA. They're like these little hits and your body is continuously having to work to fix those every single time you go out in the sun or into an area with lots of radiation, lots of pollution. So your body has some natural antioxidants it uses to 
fight those. Basically think of it like little shields from those bullets. And vitamin C is one of them. We have a lot of vitamin C in our skin naturally when we're younger, and that starts to go away as we age, like so many things. So you have to add it back. And I do recommend getting a vitamin C serum with other antioxidants, and those include ferulic acid and vitamin E. You can get them all separate, save yourself the hassle, get one that includes all three of those. Usually it will say it on the front that it includes vitamin C, vitamin E, and ferulic acid. The most potent form of vitamin C that has been studied is l -ascorbic acid. It is a very unstable molecule to apply to the skin. So as much as I say, like make your own at home, it, it's really so unstable. If you crush up some vitamin C and put it on, it's probably not gonna do anything. It needs to be pH balanced so that it can actually get into the skin. The best form of it to use is a serum. A serum is the most potent form of any sort of ingredient. Uh, so when you use a serum on clean skin, it's actually gonna be absorbed a lot better. Vitamin C does sometimes smell, they say it smells a little bit like hot dogs, old hot dogs that's normal. And it can turn a little yellow. This one actually I love because it's always clear. They small batch it and it's clean. It's great. It hasn't been oxidized. So it's not that yellowy color. This is my favorite. Banish is the one you can get it online on the Banish website. What other good ones do I recommend? I like um, the new organic super C serum. This one's good for sensitive skin because it's sodium ascorbyl phosphate, which is not as irritating as L ascorbic acid. It's a great clean option. And then my favorite clean vitamin C option that you can actually just get in a pharmacy, like in a CVS or a Walgreens is the Mad Hippie vitamin C serum. And again, that one's also good for sensitive skin. There are other antioxidants you can use. Um, glutathione is one that you might see. Niacinamide is one that you might see. These are all great. I still think the GOAT is vitamin C and that's why you see it hyped up everywhere. But certainly these other ones are options as well and there's no harm in using more if you want to double, triple up on your antioxidant. Niacinamide also goes by vitamin B3. It's in a lot of serums. It's in a lot of moisturizers. You may already be using it. So just check the ingredients of anything you're already using because a lot, a lot, a lot of skincare contains niacinamide already. Okay, so that is the bare minimum anti-aging skincare routine. You do all of that in the morning. You wash your face, you put on your vitamin C serum, you put on your sunscreen, you put on your hat, your protective clothing, you're ready to go out. But now it's nighttime and nighttime is the time to reverse all the aging that you already have. Think of it as like the time you're gonna sort of shut down, you're gonna allow your skin to rebuild, get rid of some of those wrinkles, get rid of some of those age spots. So nighttime is the rebuild time. Morning protection, nighttime rebuilding. So what is the number one dermatologist recommended ingredient to reverse aging? This is no secret, it is retinoids. Retinoids are the go. Retinoids can include retinol, retinal, or prescription retinoids like tretinoin, Tazerac, any of these you may have heard about already. Check out this video about picking the appropriate retinoid for you. So why are retinoids so great? So think of retinoids like exercise for your skin, okay? So just like exercise, you gotta be consistent. You're gonna be using this for a long time. This is like a commitment, right? So you don't wanna rush into it. You don't wanna go to the gym and like kill yourself and then be so sore and achy and injured that you like can't do it ever again, right? So that is how you need to think of retinoids. You have to be consistent and you're gonna feel a little soreness when you start. Retinoids encourage cell turnover, they decrease pigmentation, they are gonna help collagen remodeling, and they are gonna smooth out your wrinkles, okay? This will work if you are consistent. When choosing a retinoid, you can see my video here on retinols versus tretinoin. My favorite clean options are BU Retinol, and that's a serum. I also like the vetted Derm Lab R serum, does it say R there? Yeah, which stands for retinol. And the retinol Resculpt by Murad is also excellent. 
great clean option. You are gonna use a pea size amount or a few drops. If it's a serum on clean skin, you're gonna use it only at nighttime because it's inactivated by the sunlight. And you're gonna start just every three nights. Don't try to be a hero. Again, you don't wanna rush in and go from your couch to a marathon. That's not gonna work. Start real slow. The slower you go, the more likely you're gonna come back here in a year and tell me how awesome your skin looks. If you start too fast, expect to see breakouts of some of your acne coming up. Expect to see redness, particularly around the nose, around the mouth, maybe on the eyelids. Expect to see a lot of peeling. You know, you may see a little of these things here and there, even if you go slow, but the slower you go, the better. Other tips to decrease some of these side effects include like putting either a moisturizer on first to dilute the product or like a hyaluronic acid serum or some other serum that doesn't have a lot of active ingredients on first that will kind of again buffer the retinol. So it does make it a little weaker, but that is going to, again, allow you to, to build up and sort of like building those muscles when you exercise, it's really going to help to keep you going in the long run. But I do promise you that if you are consistent, you will see results with this. There's a reason it is the product that people recommend for anti-aging. You will notice improvement in your wrinkles, brown spots, just general signs of aging. Any person you've seen where you're like, man, their skin's like glowing. Trust me, it's retinol, it's retinoids. Okay. It's like, that is the secret, but it's not a secret because it's like saying that the secret to long, healthy living is like eating healthy and exercise, right? It's easier said than done. Same with retinoids, easier said than done. If you can commit and you can do it, I promise you come back, comment here next year about how awesome your skin looks. One thing you do have to include in your nighttime regimen, if you are using a retinoid or even if you're not, is a moisturizer. Not everyone needs a moisturizer in the morning. I have dry skin. I always use it in the morning after my vitamin C serum, before my SPF. But certainly at night, if you're using a retinoid, you need to put it on as the last step. Look for ingredients like hyaluronic acid and ceramides. These are natural moisturizing ingredients in your skin already that tend to decrease as we get older and our skin gets drier. What do I like? The best clean skincare options. This is my new favorite. I'm actually using this currently. I believe you can get it on their website. It's the super supple, pure and simple prebiotic moisturizer. It's all natural, organic, toxin free, cruelty free. This stuff is great. This is my favorite new natural moisturizer. I use it all the time. Other ones I like are uh, Nourish the Goddess Evening Rescue Cream Figgy by Figgy Beauty. This one's from Denmark. The pure and simple one is from England. I find that they have like a lot more sort of like natural skincare options. I think they're a little more ahead of the game when it comes to like clean beauty options. So anywho, the other one that you can get at the pharmacy that won't break the bank, I actually use this on my kids and it doesn't get as much talk as some of the other La Roche Mose moisturizers, but it's the Lipicar AP Balm Intense Repair Moisturizing Cream. It's for very dry skin, but this stuff is great. I actually keep it upstairs, downstairs. When anybody needs some moisturizer, this goes on. So while I'm currently not using that as my nighttime moisturizer, I, I do use the pure and simple one, but this is like my fall back on moisturizer for everything. It goes on the body, the face. So anyhow, that's a good one. Totally clean. So that's it. That's your routine. Morning, you're gonna wash your face, put on your vitamin C antioxidant serum. You can put on your moisturizer then and your sunscreen. At nighttime, you're going to remodel your skin. You're gonna wash it. You're going to put on your retinoid, your retinol, your tretinoin, whatever you're using. You're gonna lock it in with your moisturizer. Done. That's it. Those are the basics. That's like your cardio and your strength training. This is it. You know, you don't need to get fancier, right? But you may say, look, Dr. Abby, I'm already doing all of that. I've like been using retinoids for years. Like tell me something I don't know. So I don't know if I'll be able to tell you something you don't know. But once you have that down, I would say the two anti-aging things to include in your skincare would be an exfoliant. So an exfoliant is going to help you remove some of the dead skin. You need that help as you get older. Your skin is just like tired. It does not want to do all the things it did when it was a teenager, like exfoliant itself. It has other stuff to do. So if you're looking for like that really bright, fresh look, you feel like maybe your makeup doesn't sit right in terms of like the texture of your skin and you've already gotten your like retinol down, right? You've been using it every night or maybe you're using it just like five times a week or whatnot, great. So then you can add in 
an AHA, BHA, some sort of chemical exfoliant. It comes by the names glycolic acid, lactic acid. You may see just AHA, BHA on the bottle. It helps with hyperpigmentation because again, it's like turns over the skin and exfoliates the skin a little bit. They can be very irritating and drying, especially when used with a retinol. So I do advise when you're doing this, don't do it more than once or two times a week. And do not do it the same night that you use your retinol. It's just usually for almost everyone, it's just too much. Now, can some people tolerate using both on the same night? Sure. It's the same way some people can lift, you know, 300 pounds and some people can run an ultra marathon. Of course, you can use both at the same time, but most people who are doing the basics should not use their retinol the night that they use their AHA, BHA. This is the one that I like for a clean option. It's Naked and Thriving Renew Face Serum. It includes hyaluronic acid, so it can decrease some of that irritation. Use a few drops on clean skin instead of your retinol or retinoid. Another good option that's clean is glycolic acid, 7% toner solution by The Ordinary. That's like a, you know, like great for everything. You just put on a cotton pad and kind of wipe it on and then put on your moisturizer after. So last tip that I would say for including in your anti-aging skin carotene, and again, this is only if you really have everything else down, and that would be adding peptides. Peptides are little chains of amino acids that can help as signaling molecules that help with anti-aging. Again, this is not something, like if you're not doing everything else, this is kind of like, I would say in terms of exercise analogy, this is like foam rolling or you're stretching. It's kind of like it adds like a little bit to your routine, but like if you're not doing everything else, like you are not gonna notice a huge difference just by those actions necessarily. But I really do find peptide serums and peptides have been something I've added recently and I actually found, you know, it definitely decreases, kind of softens wrinkles. This one is if you want to just include it in a moisturizer. If you're looking for a totally clean moisturizer, is this Beauty Stat Peptide Wrinkle Relaxing Moisturizer. Another moisturizer option is the Peptide Pro Firming Moisturizer by Peach and Lily. And again, you could use that as your normal like nighttime or morning moisturizer as well. So kind of kill two birds with one stone. I've included all the links to these in my shop my page. Hopefully that was helpful. Please leave comments and questions about how to incorporate these things. You can even, I'll walk you through it. Trust me, I know most of my friends are in this same stage of their life where they are really trying to maybe reverse some of the signs of aging now. It is not easy. It's like jumping into exercise when you're 35, when you're 40, right? It's not an easy thing, but trust me, you have to believe that if you're consistent in a year, you're gonna notice huge, huge, benefits. So in this video, I am going to share with you everything I know about diet and supplements that are scientifically proven to reduce signs of aging in your skin. So let's get to it. So first off, we know that you should be eating a balanced diet full of vegetables, protein, healthy fats. You should avoid sugars and highly processed foods, right? But did you know that eating sugars and highly processed foods actually makes your skin look older? And the reason for that is because of advanced glycation end products, ages. What a name, right? It ages you. So while the chemistry of glycation end products is quite complicated, in essence, if you have sugars floating around your bloodstream in a heated pool of blood, essentially, they will get attached somewhere. They'll be attached to different proteins or fats. When these sugars are added to different proteins, fats, DNA, it makes those proteins not work as well as they should. It'd be as if you were trying to operate and somebody was putting hats on you and you had to keep operating or doing whatever job you do wearing like 40 hats, right? That's gonna be a lot harder to do than just doing your job normally without all these hats hanging off of you. So that's essentially what glycation is. And this can happen throughout the body, not just the skin, even though that's what we're talking about. It happens in the eyes, in the brain, in your kidneys. It even happens in organelles like the mitochondria, which are responsible for making energy. So as you put these sugars and stuff them in everywhere, it's basically making your whole body not work as well as it should, and it ages faster. In the skin, the biggest proteins that are affected are collagen and elastin. They basically, when you put those sticky glycation products on them, they don't work as well, and your skin is gonna age faster. 
This process in the skin is called sugar sag. Sagging of your face because of sugar. So can you test for advanced glycation end products, ages, in your body? Well, yes, actually, there is a test that we've been using as physicians for a very long time to test for how well your diabetes is controlled. Because essentially, a lot of the end stage problems of diabetes is related to these advanced glycation products. So the test that we use in diabetes is called hemoglobin A1C. And what that measures is the amount or percentage of your hemoglobin, the protein that's in your red blood cells, how much of that has sugar attached to it, basically. And it's a pretty good measure of what your average blood sugar in your blood is over like a three month period. So we assume that the hemoglobin A1C is representative of all the organs, and that it's essentially the canary in the coal mine, that there's too much sugar on average in the blood and is basically being stuck to all sorts of different proteins and organs. So should you go out and get a hemoglobin A1C? No, that's not what I'm suggesting. Obviously, if you have diabetes, you use that to monitor, but I use it as just an illustration to show you that we do know as physicians, as scientists, that this process is happening all the time. So how do you control your diet to decrease these ages, whether it's for your entire health or for your skin health, are there things that you can do to help? So just like in diabetes, obviously you wanna pay attention to controlling your sugar. Does that mean you never can eat cake again? No, just means on average, you want to decrease your sugar and high processed food, high glycemic index foods. So I'm gonna give you some diet tips that I actually learned from a nutritionist when I had gestational diabetes. So despite not gaining very much weight during my pregnancies. I got gestational diabetes for both pregnancies, thanks to my mom, she also had it. And so that meant my sugars were going way up really high, which is a problem for my body, but it was a really problem also for my little babies. And so I met with a nutritionist and they actually gave me this tip about controlling the glycemic index of your food so you can decrease your blood sugars. So the recommendation is that if you're looking at your nutrition label, you look at the total carbohydrates and you subtract the fiber in that product and the protein. So for instance, I just ate this protein bar and it had 22 grams of carbohydrates Dietary fiber was one gram and protein was 20 grams. So that would be 22 minus one minus 20. So the index would be just one gram. And you want that number, that index number to be 12 or under. Now again, this is more important if you are somebody with diabetes where your body's not getting that blood sugar down. For most people, you can live outside of these realms where it doesn't have to be perfectly balanced. But in general, if you think about balancing the fat, fiber, protein, and carbohydrates in a meal, you are gonna digest it and your sugar is not gonna go up as high. So during this time that I had gestational diabetes, I was checking my blood sugars all the time. And I would notice that if I ate a handful of grapes, for instance, which are wonderful, and I am a huge advocate for eating fruit, but if I would eat grapes, my blood sugar would shoot up to 200. If I had grapes with Greek yogurt and some nuts, then my blood sugar would stay normal. So same food, same sugar, but balanced with protein and fiber. So it is possible to have your cake and eat it too. Having a sugar soon after a high protein, high vegetable fiber meal actually is not gonna affect your blood sugar the same way it will be if you just eat it on a completely empty stomach with no other protein or fiber. So that piece of cake is gonna affect you very differently depending on other foods that you eat at the same time. And of course, as I mentioned, the same two people who eat the same two meals are going to have different blood sugars. And that is again, based on your genetics, it's based on your insulin resistance. Insulin is the protein in the body that takes the sugar out of the blood and it brings it to the organs that need it. That's your brain for thinking, that's your muscles for running, it's your heart pumping, those muscles pumping need a lot of sugar. So sugar serves a great purpose in your body. Those carbohydrates keep you alive. But because of genetics, sometimes people either don't make enough insulin or they're a little resistant to the insulin. And so that blood sugar doesn't get where it needs to go. And instead it gets attached to all these proteins that are hanging around in the body. We don't want that. And so these factors are gonna play a dramatic role in 
how you respond to a meal. So even if you don't want to add up your carbohydrates and your proteins, if you kind of think about the general meal, keeping it balanced is going to really help decrease those ages and decrease the appearance of age in your skin. The other thing besides a low sugar diet is exercise. Now I mentioned that those muscles that you use require a ton of sugar. So when you exercise, that basically shunts that sugar from the bloodstream and it really pulls it in and sends messages to your body to get that sugar, use it to make your muscles go. So the more you exercise, the less sugar is just hanging out in the bloodstream. So again, nothing new here, eat a balanced, healthy diet and exercise. Another possible way that you can be actually eating glycation products is by cooked meat. So meat with a sugar in a frying pan can actually produce those same glycation products that you get inside your body, but they can make them in the pan. Now, my thought is that most of those, when you eat the meat, it's probably getting broken down by your enzymes, by your digestive enzymes in the gut. There's some data to suggest that some of those glycation products actually are getting through and getting into the bloodstream, but I think more research is needed in that regard. That being said, you know, we all know we should not eat too much meat, especially really charred meat. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, moving on to collagen. Collagen is a big one. I feel like I see collagen supplements everywhere. And that's because it does make some sort of sense that our skin is made with collagen and elastin. That's what gives it the flexibility, the bounce, the fullness. Collagen is in our ligaments that allow us to move. It's in our nails, it's in our hair. Collagen is in animals, right? It's the protein of animals, us included, we're animals. So it makes sense that if you eat it, it will go and make more collagen and keep your skin nice and plump and hydrated. Except that when you eat something, it goes through a digestive process that involves enzymes that kind of clip proteins up into its separate peptides and amino acids. Then your body takes those and it rebuilds it. So it's essentially like taking a house, breaking it down into its bricks and mortar, and then rebuilding a new house house. So that's why I was actually surprised to read the systematic reviews that show that actually collagen supplements do help the appearance of your skin. And that was particularly true for fish and porcine derived collagens. Now, does that mean that you should run out and get a collagen supplement as soon as possible? I think that if you like collagen supplements, if you're using that and you like that as your source of protein, then keep going. That's great. We know it helps, right? I would like to see the study where collagen supplements are compared to just a high protein diet, like eating chicken and fish and eating a really balanced vegan or vegetarian diet where you could really say, well, is this just because of the protein? right? So protein is protein. Like I said, it gets broken down into its separate amino acids and peptides, and it gets rebuilt back up into the proteins that you need in your body. And so I think the key is really just getting adequate protein. Now, this is much easier for non-vegetarians than for vegetarians or vegans. And that's why there's actually no vegan collagen that you can get because collagen is by definition from animal proteins you need at least 0.8 grams per kilogram of weight in protein. That's kind of like the minimum. In terms of maximum, it really depends again on like how much you're weightlifting or exercising, how much new muscle you are building, because again, you're gonna need those amino acids and those proteins to build all the proteins in your body, not just the skin. So if you're pretty sedentary, you might only need that 0.8 grams per kilogram. If you're vegan or vegetarian, again, you are going to need to balance your diet so that always you are getting all the amino acids with every meal. So that means not just eating rice, but eating rice and beans together to get a full total whole protein where you can get all the amino acids. So what about supplements? So there actually have been a number of supplements that have shown to prevent and reverse some of the signs of aging. The vast majority of these work as antioxidants. Essentially, a lot of the aging of your skin occurs from UV damage coming in, pollution coming in, creating these free radicals, damaging your DNA, damaging proteins. It's like every time you walk out of your house, you're essentially having these little bullets go at your skin. So antioxidants are like man-to-man -man combat that fight those free radicals from UV damage and pollution. A lot of them can be ingested just through your food. A lot of your food has antioxidants, especially 
fruits and vegetables. A lot of fruits and vegetables have your antioxidants that you need to fight those free radicals. The big one that you hear about is vitamin C. So vitamin C is actually in our skin. It is fighting the free radicals. That's why vitamin C is easiest to get into the skin from the outside, but some of it does come from ingesting it as well. Here's a list of the most researched supplements that have anti-aging effects in your skin. And I don't mean inside the rest of your body, but just for the skin. And I didn't include any of them that are patented. So rosmarinic acid is what it sounds like. It's in rosemary oil. Polypodium locotomus. Try saying that five times fast. My favorite actually are the carotenoids. Carotenoids are in any red or orange vegetable um, that you eat. My favorite is astaxanthin. It's actually, I take this daily. It not only fights those free radicals, it can reduce your incidence of sunburn and sun damage from UV. And the only issue is it can give you a little bit of a tan look. It doesn't for me, but if that's the look you're going for, you might like that. Otherwise you might not like that, but just keep it in mind. Pomegranate extract actually has good photo protection and anti-aging capabilities, as well as orthosilic acid, which if you're taking a hair and vitamin supplement, you may already be taking something similar to that. So even if you are using these supplements that can help decrease how easily you get sunburned, decrease the photo damage that you get when you're out in the sun, you should still be wearing sunscreen. Don't depend only on these. Again, they're a little bit of a UV protection, but they're not the same as wearing full sun protection. So don't go out and just say like, well, I took my supplement today, so I'm good to go. I'm gonna protect myself against UV damage and pollution. Wear the sunscreen, do all of it in order to age beautifully. So this video is for you if you started to notice wrinkles, crepey skin, fine lines, discoloration of your face, and you want to know what procedures you can get to reverse it. So what are the best procedures to reverse aging? Let's get into it. So the first thing you need to do is understand the general principle on procedures that reverse the signs of aging in your skin. Essentially, all the ones we're gonna to discuss today put little areas of damage or small holes in the skin. Now that's very counterintuitive, right? Why do you wanna damage the skin in order to reverse aging? You can think of it as very similar to if you're pruning trees. So when we first moved into our house, there was a cherry tree that was right out front. It was a little sapling planted pretty far away from the house. And in all the chaos of moving, we didn't realize that that tree was our responsibility. And so a month went by and we weren't watering it. And so a whole tree branch died. And no matter how much water Water I put in or fertilizer, nothing reversed it until I cut off that dead tree branch. And then a new branch, a new sapling branch came out, regrew. Seven years later, that tree is full and beautiful. So procedures like laser, microneedling, even chemical peels, all of what we're going to discuss today, all of these are like pruning for your skin. They create small areas of damage that makes your skin wake up and repair it and actually make it look younger than it is now. You rebuild collagen, elastin, you get rid of all that pigmented skin and take out old debris. But what procedure should you choose? So the best procedure for you is going to be based on your time available, your budget and your expectations. How much of a benefit do you wanna see? So for each of these, I'll review the common side effects, the estimated downtime, estimated cost, and what outcomes you can expect. So first, starting out with the low risk, low cost, but also low outcome or low benefit. So my favorite for at home procedures that reverse aging is home microneedling. You wanna use a stamping device opposed to a roller because a roller pulls the skin, it rips the skin. This is the stamping device I use. Microneedling is best for someone who has minimal skin damage, minimal texture change, has some mild early wrinkles. They want some benefit, but they're not willing to have a ton of downtime, a ton of cost or side effects in order to get benefit. So for more information on microneedling, you can check out this video here, but just to give you a summary, essentially a stamping tool has very small needles 
And those needles provide little micro holes in the skin that, that again, trigger the body to wake up and fix those holes and actually create new collagen. This is the device I use, it's the Banisher 2.0. I've included the link in the description, but essentially you'll have very minimal downtime, maybe a few hours of redness, very few limitations. You can use your normal makeup and your skincare the next morning. And the cost per treatment is anywhere from five to $15 per treatment. You often need repeated treatments and even maintenance treatments. So it's definitely not a one-time thing, but a great option if you're just starting to see the signs of aging and you want to kind of put the clock back just a little. Other home options include home chemical peels, TCA peels, and glycolic acid peels being the most common, but there are other AHA and BHA peels. These are gonna peel off the top layer of the skin and again, kind of wake up the skin to try to make a new top layer. So it's not gonna go particularly deep. It's not gonna help with sort of deeper set scars or deeper wrinkles, but it's a great way to get glowing skin, help with some pigmentation. Unlike the microneedling, home chemical peels can result in some hyperpigmentation and discoloration, especially if you're skin of color. If you have a darker skin type, you're more likely to get complications related to hyperpigmentation when you use home or in office chemical peels. These again, just like the microneedling, can require several treatments. They can require maintenance treatments. They range from anywhere from um, 10 to $30 per treatment range. So again, very affordable, but you're not gonna see sort of a really drastic uh, reversal of age, but you are gonna notice an improvement in your skin and the appearance of aging. So in summary, you can think of these home procedures kind of like cutting off the heads of your hydrangeas in terms of pruning. You know, you're getting a reset, you're going to notice some improvement for minimal cost and downtime, but what if you need a little more pruning? What if you have deeper wrinkles, some really deep acne scars or other textural changes? pretty decent discoloration that's making you look much older than your stated age, then you're gonna consider an in-office procedure. Now, of course, the procedure you choose is going to depend on what matters to you. It's gonna really depend on your budget. It's gonna depend on how much benefit you're looking to see. It's gonna depend on how much downtime you have to spend. I do advise seeking a dermatologist or a plastic surgeon, someone who's specialized in these cosmetic procedures. So we're gonna move on to the medium risk, medium cost, medium outcome in office procedures. Kind of the equivalent of pruning many different branches off your hydrangeas. So the first is we talked about home microneedling. Now we're gonna talk about in-office microneedling. In-office microneedling uses longer needles. They use more of them. And so you're gonna get be able to penetrate deeper into the skin and see a little more effect and outcome. Downtime is usually just a few days of redness, maybe a little peeling. Just like home microneedling, relatively low risk of hyperpigmentation in skin and color. You can require several treatments though. This is not a one-time thing. This can require four, six, eight, even more treatments to get the effect that you're looking for. And you can require maintenance treatments going forward. Cost is anywhere from $75 to $200 per treatment, depending on where you live in the country, how big of an area you're having treated. But remember, you will likely need many treatments to get the effect you're looking for. So consider that when you're budgeting. So what's even better than putting hundreds or thousands of little micro holes in your skin in order to reverse aging? Actually putting thousands or millions of little nano holes or damage in your skin. And that's what a laser is. So lasers kind of take the concept of microneedling, but they are so pinpoint focused that they can create these tiny little nano columns of thermal damage or even little tiny holes in the skin. And that triggers the collagen to be built. It triggers the skin age to reverse. So in terms of resurfacing lasers that we're gonna discuss for reversing aging, the big two are fractional lasers. What fractional means is again, it's just putting tiny little holes in and they're all spaced apart. Non-ablative fractional laser often goes by the names of Resurfex or Fraxel, Restore, Clear and Brilliant. These are all just brand names of the concept of a fractional non-ablative laser. So what a fractional non-ablative laser does is it puts these tiny little nano thermal damage columns that go all the way down into the dermis where the collagen and elastin are built. It does not exactly make a hole the way the microneedling does. It's just like a little column of burn. 
It is thought to be a little more effective for reversing aging than microneedling because it can get down deeper and it is slightly more costly, around 300 to 400 per treatment. But again, you are likely gonna need several treatments, generally anywhere from three to five, sometimes even more depending on the severity of your sun damage, skin damage, and what you're looking to achieve. Downtime, again, just like the microneedling, pretty minimal. The day of, you're gonna have some redness. This is actually me just yesterday. I had fractional non-ablative laser around my eyes and around my mouth for little wrinkles that I have there that I don't wanna use filler or Botox on. That crepey skin can respond very well to the fractional non-ablative laser. And you can see a pretty red, the day of, most of that redness is gone or at least minimized by the second day, but I have a lot of puffiness and I have a little bit of a sad basset hound look today. And that is because of the swelling around my mouth and around my eyes related to that fractional non-ablative laser. Usually that's gone by day three. So minimal downtime, you can typically go out and do your normal activities depending on how big of an area you had treated. Pain for both in-office microneedling and fractional non-ablative laser is pretty minimal to mild. I wouldn't say it's the worst pain ever, but it's not exactly pleasant. You do get a topical numbing agent on that reduces a lot of the pain. And it feels like a little bit like a bee sting or an ant bite. It's over really quickly. Pain is gone as soon as the procedure is over. So again, this is a really great balance, a really great option. If you say, look, I want a little more for these wrinkles, discoloration. I'm willing to pay a little more, but I still don't want a ton of downside. I'm a busy person. I cannot afford to be taking like a month from work or looking like a burn victim for, you know, a long period of time, right? So this is a good sort of middle of the road procedure. Again, setting your expectations that it's not gonna be an overnight thing. You didn't get those wrinkles overnight. They're not gonna be reversed overnight, but it definitely can help minimize the appearance of aging. But what if you want a real glow up? What if you really want to wow people? Well, then you're gonna consider a fractional ablative laser. So these fractional ablative, generally CO2 lasers are kind of what would happen if microneedling had a baby with fractional non-ablative laser. So you're creating little holes in the epidermis and superficial dermis, but instead of micro holes, like the microneedling, these are nano holes. This is a laser. It is shooting these little tiny, 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 tiny millions of tiny holes that create injury triggering the skin to rebuild that epidermis and dermis. At the same time, they're actually going deeper and creating thermal damage deeper into the dermis, same as the fractional non-ablative laser that then trigger more collagen to be rebuilt, elastin to be rebuilt, and the skin to generally be turned over. So you really get remodeling of both layers of the skin. It's not for the faint of heart though. Again, it's a little more spicy than either of the other two, but you'll get that same type of numbing medication before. You're gonna get at least a week of redness and peeling. The peeling tends to be in these tiny little, like almost squares of peeling. So opposed to like how you skin your knee, like the whole sheet kind of comes off. This is more like a little sandpaper rough type of peeling that occurs. And again, is usually gone by one week, but you can get some persistent redness for up to a month. And generally that can be covered with makeup by that one week point. Hyperpigmentation is slightly higher for ablative fractional laser than it is for non-ablative, especially again in patients who have darker skin tones. But with an expert, you know, you can consider these treatments regardless, but certainly see someone who really knows skin of color and that you take real precautions getting with all of these, no matter who you are, having really good sun protection, especially the first two weeks after these procedures. Often you're gonna see results after one treatment for fractional CO2. You may need a maintenance treatment once a year or once every few years, depending on your goals. But unlike some of the other procedures, it's not something where you're coming back many, many times. So a really great option for many. I have not done it yet, only cause again, that week of peeling and downtime is a little bit much for my schedule at this time, but certainly something I would consider now that I'm 40 and my wrinkles are becoming more and more prominent and it may be time soon enough. Before moving on, I also wanna make one comment about in-office chemical peels. Chemical peels are wonderful. They can result in significant improvement to the skin. Medium depth chemical peels, 
go to the top layer of the skin plus a little bit deeper so they can help with remodeling, pigmentation, acne scars, all of the above. They've fallen a little bit out of favor since the advent of lasers. And so not everybody is well practiced or trained in using a whole variety of chemical peels, but in the right hands, chemical peels are wonderful. If that is something you are interested instead of laser or microneedling, certainly just find an expert who uses chemical peels all the time in order to get the best results. And again, they do have that same risk of hyperpigmentation if you have darker skin. So again, discuss that with your provider. So is that the best we can do? you know, remove a little wrinkles, sort of go back a little bit. If you really want to press the reset button on your skin, stay tuned because here are the two options that are going to reverse 10, 20, 30 years off of your skin. So these I call the high risk, medium to high cost, significant outcome, significant improvement in your skin. This is basically like cutting that hydrangea all the way down to the root and letting it start up at the beginning of the season and grow a whole new hydrangea. This is resetting, rebooting your skin. So the first is ablative resurfacing. Wait, didn't we already talk about ablative resurfacing? So that was fractional ablative resurfacing. So again, those tiny little points, tiny little fractions of dots is fractional ablative resurfacing. This is full ablative resurfacing. There are no little dots. This is the whole thing. They just ablate your skin, the whole top layer as if you skinned your knee, but it's not your knee, it's your face. This allows a whole new layer of skin to grow up, just like that hydrangea. You are pressing the reset button, turning the computer off, letting it reboot and grow a new layer of skin. This is for significant sun damage, really deep wrinkles, really bad texture change, very deep acne scars. The downtime for ablative laser is at least a month. It generally ranges from four to six weeks. You're gonna get a lot of redness, a lot of peeling. Think again, like that, skin knee, right? What does the skin knee do as it's healing up? That's gonna be similar to what your face does. During that healing period of four to six weeks, you really can't use any makeup, very little minimal skincare. Um, there's a high infection risk for both bacteria and for viruses, especially if you've had a history of cold sores. Sometimes practitioners will give you some prophylactic antibiotics or prophylactic antivirals, depending on your situation. There's a much higher risk of scarring with this procedure. And there's also a much higher risk of hyperpigmentation. Again, especially the darker your skin color, the higher risk of hyperpigmentation. I've said it a bunch of times, but I'm gonna keep saying it. But the results, if you can go through it, can be dramatic with skin that looks 10, 20, even for some people, 30 years younger. You can get this glow, this new skin, baby bottom skin that has come up from a sprout after this procedure. So can certainly be worth it if you have the time. It also costs a little more money, typically around $4,000, $5,000, but it's generally kind of a once in a lifetime, maybe twice in a lifetime type of procedure. So the other way to hit the reboot button is a phenol croton oil peel. Phenol peels, again, will literally reverse the time. It will send your skin back 30 years, but this is a controlled burn. It's a controlled chemical burn. The risks in terms of infection and hyperpigmentation and healing are all very similar to ablative laser with the added risk that it actually can be cardiotoxic. And so you need to have this procedure performed by somebody who really knows what they're doing that they're an expert in this procedure, they do it all the time, and they know how to take particular precautions and monitoring for heart and for other systemic side effects, because this is not like your little home chemical peel. If you are considering a phenol peel, do your homework, find a practitioner who does these all the time and really can walk you through the steps of recovery, because just like the ablative laser, it is not gonna be a simple wake up and you're done. This is four to six weeks, of peeling, oozing, redness, drainage. Again, think of what does it feel like and look like when you skin your knee, and then think about that on your face with the addition that both phenol peels and ablative laser can affect deeper dermis and coagulation of the proteins deeper down. So you can get a lot of pus, a lot of lymphocytes that show up. You just have to know what you're getting yourself into when you sign up for either of these procedures. But can it be worth it? 
Absolutely. Again, you can reverse 30 years off your skin. The cost is gonna range from anywhere from $750 to $8,000, depending on where you live in the country, how large of an area you're having treated. Now there are other treatments that can reverse aging um, that don't use light such as lasers or physical holes, but actually use radio frequency or ultrasound and they go much deeper into the skin and actually can tighten. I'm not going to discuss them in this video. We'll save that for another video because they're kind of a little bit separate where it's more about sort of lifting areas than actually turning over the skin and giving you that beautiful young skin. But please in the comments, leave your questions. Let me know what you want to know. If you like this video and got value from it, please like it. Please subscribe for more anti-aging skincare tips. I'm Dr. Abby Waldman. Be well.